Remember, the first and only reality of the Sith. There can only be two. Night had fallen over Coruscant. Anakin Skywalker, newly christened as Darth Vader, marched at the head of the 501st. The clone troopers were being led to the Jedi Temple, where they would carry out the Emperor's command. As they marched up the grand and sweeping staircase, a ticking started to sound behind him. And he could turn to see a thermal detonator on the belt of a trooper suddenly about to explode. Before he could even shout, the entire legion suddenly explodes in the chain reaction as each detonator sets off the one next to it. Darth Vader is thrown by the explosion to lay dead at the entrance of the Jedi Temple. Meanwhile, Palpatine sits in his office, cackling to himself. He has issued Order 66. Even now, he feels the death of so many Jedi at the Temple. A sound begins to beep. He turns to open his comm channel. You have done well, Lord Vader. The Jedi have all been wiped out. Sorry, a woman's voice says. I don't know who you're talking to, Chancellor, but this is Shakti. Wait, Palpatine says, surprised at the voice. There was a massive explosion, thousands of the clones all dead, even Anakin Skywalker. Just as you know, no other Jedi have died. Even as Palpatine sits stunned by this turn of events, he gets another call. Surely this will be better news. Suddenly, there appears Kaede Mane. Sorry to bother you, Chancellor, but my clones turned on me. Don't worry, I killed them all. Strange so that they turned like they did. Palpatine gets a sweat. One by one, all the Jedi across the galaxy start calling him. Every single commander has failed in his task to kill the Jedi. Thousands of clones are dead. And for some reason, each Jedi calls him personally. Even as he sits there, dread filling him as he realizes that the entire plan to return the Sith to supreme of the galaxy has failed. A surprise visitor enters his office. His guard suddenly faint as Yoda enters the room. Master Yoda, you survived. Surprise? Hmm. The clone turned on me. What happened to Master Windu and the others? Now angry that even Yoda managed to escape the trap, Palpatine throws up his hands. I killed them when they came to arrest me. I am the Sith Lord. I have ordered the clones to turn to kill the Jedi. And my apprentice Darth Vader, who you knew as Anakin Skywalker, was going to kill the wretched Jedi in the temple. The other just laughs. Truly wonderful, the mind of a Chancellor is. We must talk about you returning the emergency powers to the Senate. Palpatine, realizing he has failed, begrudgingly appears before the Senate. He elaborates on the plan by Anakin Skywalker to overthrow the Republic. As he elaborates on the plot, he named Senator Padme as being his co-conspirator. She... Sitting in the Senate chambers is arrested and taken to be executed. This is the last official act as Chancellor of the Republic and disgruntled Palpatine leaves Coruscant. The stress of knowing she's about to die puts her in labor. Even as Padme is giving birth, the members of the Jedi High Council are gathered. They use the force to drain her life even as she is giving birth. The baby pops out, looking exactly like Obi-Wan, with a beard even. Obi-Wan is panicking. The other members are discussing it. How is he going to explain it? He's pretty sure Anakin was the father, but they had been carrying on a rather torrent affair, him and Padme. But next comes out, a baby Gungan. The Jedi Master nod their heads. Surely this is proof. Jar Jar had been involved in the plot. So, after she dies, the Jedi having drained her life, they rest Jar Jar. Jar Jar is sent to Naboo, where he is to remain incarcerated in, in Padme's tomb. And he can never leave until he has witnessed her body completely decay. Except, they use a coffin that is all shut, that he will never see her decay, so he can never escape. As the Jedi congratulates itself on successfully thwarting an attempt to destroy them, we see a Star Destroyer in space. Tarkin is sitting there. What shall we do now, my Emperor? We see Palpatine standing on the bridge nearby. We shall build a Shadow Empire until the time is right to take the galaxy by storm. And we see the Death Star being built in the background. A single ship is seen flying towards an asteroid. On there, Yoda is meditating. There must be more to the puzzle. Much has happened over the past 20 years. The Jedi are growing restless. A darkness is waiting for them. As he says they're meditating, the Death Star eclipses the moon near the asteroid. We see Director Krennic standing there. His orders are clear. Destroy Master Yoda. Once he is dead, the Shadow Emperor will be able to strike. Just as he's about to fire the Death Star laser, suddenly the entire asteroid disappears. Find him! Krennic shouts. The asteroid has appeared over Jedi, an officer reports moments later. Krennic gets worried by the news. Somehow the Jedi has transported himself to Jedi. Does he know that it's one of the several bases of the Shadow Empire, where the stormtroopers for the new empire are given a chance to train by killing the citizens? He gives chase and arrives at Jedi. The asteroid is waiting there. He orders the laser to fire. 
But the last moment, the asteroid vanishes again. The laser blast destroys the entire continent that the troopers had been training, killing thousands of loyal troops to the Emperor. Director, the asteroid is at Scarif. Krennic orders the pursuit. Surely this is just dumb luck. There's no way that the little green Jedi would know that the Shadow Empire's research facility is on the planet. Yoda still remains in meditation. He's given himself fully over to the Force. He feels, even as he's being drawn there, like connecting dots. Even as he meditates, the asteroid again teleports, barely being missed by the super laser. The entire research base is wiped out, including thousands more troops. Target, disgusted by the display, takes over complete control of the battle station. The Shadow Emperor will not be pleased by the folly director Krennic. The asteroid has been tracked to the capital of the Shadow Empire itself. The Death Star appears over Alderaan, and he tries again to shoot the Jedi Master, but instead it hits Alderaan and explodes. Even as it explodes, the Death Star's reactor suddenly overloads. It was used too much, and the entire Death Star self destructs, killing everybody aboard. Yoda feels the disturbance of the Force, but he thinks it's just gas and he needs to fart. He suddenly opens his eyes and sees that he is near a great battle station that's being built. He says, Maybe a bathroom there is in there. So he takes a small fighter to fly towards the tester. He doesn't realize that Emperor Palpatine is there. He senses Yoda's arrival and growls or Fire at will, Commander. But each shot misses the small starfighter. This said destroying ships that have brought parts to build the second tester. Yoda lands and takes an elevator. Straight up to Palpatine's storm room. He still needs to use the bathroom, and Palpatine's angry. Why will none of these Jedi die? Your arrogance blinds you, Master Yoda. Now you will experience the full power of the dark None of these Jedi die. He prepares to throw lightning at Yoda, but then Yoda lets out a massive fart. Palpatine gets thrown backwards, and he falls right over the edge and plunges into the very depths of the Death Star. Yoda laughs, and the second Death Star suddenly explodes. At long last, Darth Sidious has been destroyed, and not a single Jedi died. Even as the Death Star explodes, Yoda suddenly appears in a small hut, having transported himself there. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching this first alternate Star Wars story. There will be more, and not any of them as goofy as this one. But I really thought it would be a fun story to do. Have a wonderful day, and may the Force- The rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. Ignite the Inferno.